So, Father God, we just come to you this morning. I thank you for those who are here, God. I thank you for their excitement and their hunger to come and hear a word from you. I thank you, God, for this platform this, this, this that you have created that allow us to come together um, from all around the globe, Father God. I do not take it lightly, God, that you allow us to come and that you allow me to be the vessel to speak on your behalf. And so, therefore, Father God, I ask that you will remove me from the equation altogether. Set me aside. Hide me behind you, Father God, so that only what comes forth is of you. Father God, you know every person uh, that's here, that's present right now. You know every hair that's on their head. You know every concern they have. You know they're rising up and they're setting down. You know it all, Father God. So we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith this morning, God. Give us ears to hear and then give us the strength and the courage to put into play, to implement what we receive from your word today, Father God. We stand in agreement that your word is going to go out and it will accomplish what you sent it to do. We believe and we receive in advance already. Our hearts are set up uh, to walk in obedience today. So speak, Holy Spirit. We are listening in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hey, Nick, good morning. Hey, Sister Jay, good morning. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So y'all ready to jump into the word? If you all are, are ready, somebody just put ready in the chat. Somebody say, let's go. It's Friday, y'all. It has been, even though it's been a four-day week for me, work-wise, it feels like I've been at work for two weeks this week. It's been that kind of a week. But um, I just thank God. I thank God for his goodness. I thank God for his faithfulness. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Remember that song? Can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody do me like the Lord? That's what I'm singing this morning. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. So this morning, I'm going to share a few scriptures with you. And then um, I'm, I'm ready to unpack this message that God placed on my heart this morning. And I pray that you will just buckle up your seatbelt, sit back, relax. If you're at work, you know, I pray uh, against all distractions that you're able to just receive this morning. So we'll be in Nehemiah, and I'm going to read Nehemiah chapter 6. Hey, Irene, good morning. Um, Nehemiah 6, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 3, and then verses 8 and 9. So that's Nehemiah 6, 1, 2, and 3, and verses 8 and 9. If somebody can put that in the chat for me. I would be ever so grateful. So hear the word of God. It says, It was told to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, and Arab that to the rest of those who hated us that I had built the wall again. This is Nehemiah. He said they were told that the wall had no more open places, but I had not yet set up the doors in the gate. So Sanballat and Jeshem sent word to me saying, come let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they were planning to hurt or kill me. So I sent men with a word, a message to them saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. I need somebody to just say that this morning. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. I am about the business of the Lord. I'm trying to become my best self. I'm trying to be the best wife. I'm trying to be the best friend. I'm trying to be the best sister. I'm trying to be the best mom, the best grand. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. He says, why should the work stop while I leave it to come down to you? And then I'm going to jump to verses 8 and 9. It says, then I sent word to him saying, no such a thing as you say have been done. You are making them up in your own mind. For they all wanted to make us afraid, thinking their hands will become weak and work will not be done. But then Nehemiah says, but now, O oh God, 
strength in my hands. Now, oh God, give me what I need, the stamina. Give me the focus. Give me what I need to, to complete what was started. This is so good. And if in between the verses that we read, basically what happened is they amped up their, their, their plans, their schemes, their plots. You know, when, when he wasn't coming down, then they went to a, a new level. Somebody say a new level. That's what the devil does. You know, so, sometimes we, we conquer one area, right? And we're feeling good that we conquered this area. And then the next thing you know, he blindsides and he hits us somewhere else right that that's how he is he, he he looks for when we you know the the sometimes the unexpected places he shows up or or he looks for that that weak link or or whatever but and and what he does is he becomes desperate when one thing doesn't work he tries another when this doesn't work he tries another y'all know what i'm talking about he he always ramps and amps things up but here's a story I want to share with you all, okay? Just, I need you to listen with your spiritual ears this morning. Hear, hear how, hear the, hear, hear, hear the word of God through this story. It says, on a dark December night, 36 years ago, a Lockheed jumbo jet crashed into the Florida Everglades, killing over 100 people. A curious thing about this accident is that all vital parts and systems of the airplane were functioning perfectly. The plane could have easily landed safely at its destination in Miami that was only 20 miles away. During the final approach, however, the crew noticed that one green light had failed to illuminate a light that indicates whether or not the nose landing gear had extended su successfully. And the pilots, they stopped the approach. They discontinued the approach and set the aircraft into a circling holding pattern over the pitch black Everglades and turned their attention toward investigating the problem. They became so preoccupied Somebody said, God, help me to not become so preoccupied. They became so preoccupied with their search, with investigating why this, this, this bulb, this light was not illuminating, that they failed to realize the plane was gradually descending. In other words, sometimes we can get so stuck and we can get so caught up and we can get so narrowly focused on one thing that we don't realize that there is a decline happening. Help me, Holy Ghost, in our spiritual growth, that there is a decline happening in our ability to. The, the, so it said that while they were so focused on this bulb, this light, the plane was gradually descending closer and closer toward the dark swamp below. And by the time someone noticed what was happening, it was too late. God help us. We don't want it to get to the place where it is it's too late. By the time they realized it was too late to avoid the disaster. After the accident, investigators tried to determine the cause. The landing gear had indeed lowered properly, y'all. The plane was in perfect mechanical condition. Everything was working properly, all except one thing, a single burnt out light bulb. The tiny bulb was worth about 20 cents. And that started the chain of events that ultimately led to the tragic death of over 100 people. Now, of course, the malfunctioning light bulb didn't cause the accident, but the accident happened because the crew placed its focus on something that seemed to matter at the moment while losing sight at what mattered most. This morning, I just want to share with you from the topic, burnt out light bulbs, or better yet, beware of burnt out 
light bulbs. See, here's the thing. Losing focus will cause us to focus on the insignificant at the expense of the significant. Can I say that again? That when we lack focus, we, we focus on what is insignificant, what's not important at the expense of what is very important. And I saw a quote one day that said, you know, the driver who focuses on the road has a far better chance of arriving alive than the one who's focusing on their phone, sending a text message, right? And I need you to understand that the devil is after our focus. You understand? We, we, we talk about doing things to increase our faith, but I need you to understand that our faith is fueled by our focus. Somebody say, my faith is fueled by my, whatever you're focused on is what's going to fuel or defuel your faith. And when we have faith in God, right, we're able to focus on the assignment, the task at hand. Peter, when he focused on Jesus, y'all, he what? He walked on water. But when he stopped focusing on Jesus, what happened? He sank. And some of us, when we are not focused on Jesus, we begin to sink. <laughs> and like that plane, sometimes the sinking is gradual. It's a gradual descent. Hey, Vaughn, it's, it's it's sometimes it's happening so subtle that we don't even realize it. And as we prepare to kind of unpack this message just a little more this morning, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. Ask Just ask self, right? I'm going to ask myself, Anne, are you focused on the things that matter most? Ask yourself, am I focused on the things that matter most, right? Where do your thoughts go when the pressure of deadlines, when the pressure is on? Do you begin to focus on short-lived stuff? You know, stuff that's temporal, stuff that's just in the moment, like being right in the moment, get back in the moment, grudge in the moment. Come on, somebody. Or are we focused on the bigger picture, on the things that matter most? Sometimes, even, listen, and some, everything that distracts us is not always bad. Sometimes what's distracting us is, is, is it, it could be something that's okay, some, but something that makes us feel good, but help me, Holy Ghost, but it can become a distraction, right? So when we look at the story of Nehemiah, we notice that he's doing a good work, y'all. He's rebuilding the walls of the city. That was important work. And I just want to share a few things with you from the story of Nehemiah for us to really consider. Because just like we heard in that story with the airplane, all it took was a, a matter of them redirecting their focus to what was, what was screaming for their attention. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because some of you got some stuff around you and some people around you, they're screaming for attention. They're trying to make their, you know, so you ever heard, you know, some people's lack of planning becomes our emergency. Yeah, you've got some folk around you that their lack of planning, their lack of praying, their lack of preparation, their lack of devotion with God, their lack is now becoming your emergency. And you got to be careful that you don't lose your focus on, on the, the enemy having you thinking that's your emergency. That's what your priority is. And it's not. The first thing I want you to notice about this whole thing with Nehemiah and doing a great work and becoming distracted is the burnt out light bulb of opposition. Somebody say opposition. Opposition. Let me let me help you. The, the enemy, he used opposition to dis, 
to try to distract Nehemiah. And I want you to notice, this is, this is important, that the opposition, the timing of the opposition, the opposition did not show up until the wall was going up. As long as the wall was broke down and, and, and they had the enemy and had access to the people and to the city, the, nobody bothered. But the minute the wall began to go up, as soon as the, the walls began to rise, the opposition intensified. In other words, as long as we're doing stuff that is impactful, as long as we're really putting in the work to heal, help me, Holy Ghost, as long as we're putting in the work to reconcile some relationships, as long as we're putting in the work, this is to lose weight and become healthy, as long as we're putting in the work to save, as long as we're putting in the work to sow, I'm talking to somebody this morning, as long as we, as long as we start but putting in the work, that is when the enemy, the opposition shows up. Because let me tell you, as long as you're doing his business, as long as you're doing his work, as long as you're being mean, as long as you're being disobedient, as long as you're being nasty, as long as you're being doubtful, as long as you're lacking faith, as long as you're doing you, as long as you're doing that stuff, he ain't going to bother you because you're already on his payroll. The only time that he, you really are going to get his attention. And that's why for some of you, when you say, you know, the devil's on my back, the devil, the devil, you know, you need to understand that a lot of times while you're feeling, help me, Holy Ghost, the opposition is not because of what you're doing wrong, it's because of what you're doing right. I'm going to say that again for some of you, that you are, you are doing the right thing. You are forging forward. You are trusting God. You're not looking at what it, you're not focusing on what it looks like in the natural, but you're standing in faith. You're standing on God's word. You're standing on his promises. You are doing the right thing. And because you're doing the right thing, the enemy has ramped up his opposition. The minute you decide to do something great, the minute you decide to do something that's out of your comfort zone, the minute you decide to step out of the boat and step in faith, that's when the waves show up. That's when the wind begins to make noise. But you need to recognize that is a, that is nothing but a distraction. It is the burnt out light bulb of opposition. And when that happens, you need to call it out for what it is. And you need to say, devil, I see you. I am doing a good work. I'm not about to come down and be distracted. I'm not about to lose myself. I'm not about to lower my standard. I'm not about to compromise. I'm not about to settle. I'm not about to question God because I know what God said. And th that's where we need to be. And so as we read uh, Nehemiah, he said to them, he said, listen, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing a great work. I, I can't come down. But, but they were persistent, y'all, because what happened is they realized that he was on a mission. You know, the devil sees you, you on a mission. And so what they did was they ramped up. Be, beware of the light bulbs of desperation. You know what I mean about desperation? Where stuff show up and it's like do or die. It's like, make, you need to make this decision now. You need to make this life change. You need to do it now. You don't have no time. You get, yeah, desperation. Desperation wants you to feel like you're running out of time. Desperation wants you to feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm older. I'm getting too old. Desperation wants you to feel like you've got to have it now. Do it now. Say it now. Help me, Holy Ghost. And so they, they, be, they became desperate. <laughs> and and it's, it's easy to become distracted when desperation is looming all around you. It's easy to become distracted, right, by the, listen, by the burnt out light bulb of unkind folk who become desperate and in the stuff they say and the stuff they do, right? The, the burnt out light bulb of people who might talk about you, who may not understand. The burnt out light bulb of faith who, people who don't have the same level of faith that you have. 
And so as you're speaking, faith talk to them. They don't understand. And so all they do is flicker and, and do stuff that gets your attention away from what God has told you. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm trying to bring this message to you all. Right? You know, desperation introduces anxiety. And what does the word say? It tells us don't be anxious for anything. But if you pay attention to desperation, whether it's your own desperation or the de or desperation of other people, you are going to lose your focus and you're going to come down from what you're doing and you're going to stop and you're going to begin a, a, a subtle descent heading toward a disastrous end. When we focus on the wrong thing, like, like the airplane, that, that descent is, you know, some of us, you know, we, we, you know, we find ourselves in a place where we start to go, man, how did I get here? Have you ever asked yourself that question? How did I get here? I mean, two months ago, you know, six months ago, I would get up and I would get in my word and I would pray and I listen to worship music on the way to work. And I, you know, and then slowly but surely you stop doing that. Maybe you start watching more of the news or you start listening more to different type of music or, or you get up and you start scrolling Facebook before you put your face in the book. Or you get up and you, you start thinking about your bills and you, I'm just saying. And, and so that over a period of time, the subtle descent is happening. Happening and you don't realize it, but then one day you wake up and you have crashed and burned and you wonder, how did I get here? Well, you got there because you lost your focus and you began to focus on the wrong stuff and you began to make what wasn't a priority a priority. And so now you're looking going, man, how did I get here? I'll tell you how you got there. You began to focus on something that was, and you began to focus on the burnt out light bulb. Now it's easy to become distracted, y'all. So the the you know this is not a message just for you. The, this is this is a message for me too, right? Because I said even some distractions can feel good. All distractions are not evil, right? There, I, there are some things, quite frankly, that I I prefer to do, that I like to do, that I enjoy doing, than the things that I should be doing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and what I enjoy is not that it's a bad thing, it's just it's not the priority. But I want you to notice something else for uh, the, from the, the story about Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah asked God to strengthen him. See, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is one of the things we have to be careful about churchy people and religious people, right? To cause us to feel like um, we're lacking faith or we don't have a close relationship with God because we admit that we are tired, because we admit that we have doubt, because we admit that we need strength or we need courage. Do you understand? Nehemiah recognized that even though he is doing a great work, even though God himself anointed him for the work, help me, Holy Ghost, even though God called him for the work, even though God put it in his path, whatever God has put, even though God put him there, Nehemiah didn't at no point think that it was because of his, himself that he was going to be able to do this thing. Nehemiah was like, okay, I, rec I see the distractions. I recognize that this thing is coming hard at me. I realize that the enemy is not giving up. My opposition is getting stronger. But I also do recognize that, God, if you gave it to me, it belongs to me. That, God, if you said I can do it, then I can do it. That, God, if you say, you said what's for me is for me. Nehemiah was like, I recognize I belong here. I recognize that this is, this is what God has called me to do. I recognize it, but God, I need you to strengthen me. Anybody need God to strengthen you this morning that you recognize you're right where God would have you to be. You're doing what God would have you to do, but you need strength because the opposition is real. You need strength because the pressure is real. Come on, you need you need strength because there is a, a, a loss in your life. You need strength because there is a job situation. You need strength because you are single and you're really praying and believing for that godly marriage. You, you 
married, but you got problems. You need strength. There's a sickness. You need strength. There's death. You need strength. And there is pressure to calm down. And can I tell you, the enemy will always put a burnt out light bulb in your view that's going to flicker. And it's going to try to, it's going to do all it can to make, get your attention. It, it's going to make noise. It's going to do whatever is necessary. Uh, and the goal is to have you take your eyes off of what is most important. I want to challenge you today that as you go about your day, as you go about your weekend, as you go about your week, I, I pray that God will give you the spirit of discernment to recognize the burnt out light bulbs when they show up. When they show up and they begin to go, you know, emergency, emergency. When they begin to say, look at me, look at me. When they begin to say, drop everything and put your, put your focus over here. When they begin to whisper to you, how oh, that's not that important. This is more important. When they begin to whisper to you, well, you don't really like doing that. So come on over here and do what you prefer to do. When they whisper to you, you're not enough. You, 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 you don't deserve to be doing that. You don't deserve to have that. Come on, I'm, I'm going to bring you back down. I want to bring you back to the place where you all distracted and, and you looking at yourself and you feeling some type of way about yourself and you doubting your self-worth and you're not in a place to, instead of focusing on your healing, all you're doing is rehearsing the past. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. He The light bulb want to keep you stuck. The light bulb want to keep you in your feelings. The light bulb want to keep you in your own thoughts. The light bulb want, come I'm trying to talk to somebody this morning. I pray that when you get, when that that's happening to you that you will recognize it for what it is and you will do just like what Nehemiah says. Yeah, devil, I see you. I recognize you. I see this is a trick. Yeah, you didn't show up till I made this decision. You didn't bother me until I said I'm going to do this thing. You weren't, When I wasn't doing my devotions, you weren't nowhere around. But now I'm doing my devotions. Here you come. Now that I'm really trying to serve and, and, and live my life for the Lord, now that I'm trying to be a kind person, now I'm trying, I ain't trying to be petty no more. I'm forgiving folk. I'm releasing things. I'm healing. Now that I am doing that, here you come. Recognize it and call it out and let him know greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Let the enemy know your strength comes from the Lord. Let the enemy know that you're not backing down, coming down, getting down, staying down. Let the enemy know that, that as long as God has put it in your path, that you are going to accomplish it. As long as God has put it in your path, you're going to have it. As long as God has put it in your path, you're going to finish it. As long as God has put it in your path, his his grace is sufficient, his, his strength, his courage comes with it, and you will be able to focus and complete. Even your healing will be complete. You are doing a great work, beloved. Refuse to come down. Refuse to bow down. Refuse to step down. Refuse to look down. Keep your focus on, keep your focus on God, Peter. <laughs> Keep your focus on God, Jerry Ann, Ellen, Vaughn, Priscilla, Deanna, Nick. Come on, keep, Irene. Keep your focus on God so that you can keep walking on water. God, strengthen me. Strengthen us. You just, he will strengthen you, Pauline. Come on. He will strengthen us today. If we would just, he will strengthen us, Regina. Come on. He will strengthen us today. He will, if, if we would just be like Nehemiah said, God, this is tough. This is hard. Within myself, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. But with you, I know I can do this. Father God, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for this word today, God. Who we thank you for this word today, God. Thank you, God, that you let us know you never leave us, you never forsake us. And the enemy can bring all the opposition he wants. But God, we believe you. We trust you, God. You and us, we have history. <laughs> yep, you have a reputation with us, God, that you complete everything that you start, God. So Father God, complete your work of healing. Complete your work of maturing. Complete your work of us becoming more like Jesus. 
Complete the work of helping us to become debt free. Complete the work of those of us who are single to help us to become that godly spouse. Complete the work in our marriages where there is healing, forgiveness that needs to come forth. Complete that work, God. Complete the work of salvation, household salvation. Complete the work of our children, our grandchildren walking in their purpose. Complete the work, God, of not just having me a job, but a career, something where, where I can flourish, God, where it is financially blessing me, but where I can be a blessing, where I can be a light, where my gifts can come forth, Father God. Do it, God. Do it like only you, God. You can, God. Complete the work of healing me. Healing me emotionally. Healing me physically. Complete the work, God. We look to you today, God, to strengthen us like Nehemiah said. Nehemiah is not pretending the opposition doesn't exist. He's not pretending like he may not be tempted to look and entertain some things. He is being real. He says, I'm doing a great work, and I need you, God, to strengthen me so I can continue to do it. I bless every person under the sound of my voice today for your strength, God, to continue in the task at hand, the assignment you have placed in each of our paths today. Bless them good, God. Bless their households, God. Bless their singleness. Bless their marriage. Bless their their ministry, bless their business, bless their family, bless their children, bless their finances, God, bless their homes, their assets, their cars, that they run good, God. <laughs> bless them on their job, God. If they need a job, bless them with a job. Promote, God. Just, just, just continue to let us know that we are going in the right direction, God. <laughs> So we just give you praise, honor, and glory today, God. We believe this word. We receive this word. And, and keep our discernment strong where we can discern these, these uh, burnt-out light bulbs <laughs> that's going to seek to get our attention. God, we don't want to lose what's important for focusing on what's not. We thank you in advance for doing what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.